This is the pre-action protocols, the steps to take before embarking on court action. This presentation covers the list of protocols and where to find them, the aim of the protocols, compliance with the protocols and the typical steps taken in a protocol. protocol. The last update to the list of protocols under the Civil Procedure Rules was on the 12th of February 2020. There are 16 pre-action protocols and one practice direction. They can be found on the Justice website. And here's a list. Five of these related to personal injury claims, four related to landlord and tenant disputes, and others relate to travel claims, debt, construction, data protection, privacy, defamation and judicial review. The aim of the protocols is to explain the conduct and the steps that the court would normally expect the parties to take before commencing court action, to ensure that the parties to a dispute understand each other's position, to promote early settlement without resorting to court action as litigation should be treated as a last resort and to reduce the costs of resolving the dispute. The dispute. Compliance with the protocols is not mandatory. However, non-compliance can result in sanctions, which include the defaulting party paying the other side's costs even if they win the claim, receiving no costs if they win the claim, receiving reduced or no interest if you are the claimant and you win, or paying additional interest if you are the defendant and you lose. Therefore, you should treat the protocols as mandatory to avoid sanctions. Each protocol sets out the steps which the parties should take before commencing court proceedings. And each protocol has a different set of steps. But the typical steps are the claimant sending a letter of claim or letter before action to the defendant the defendant responding within a reasonable amount of time. This can be from 14 days to up to three months, but each protocol has a different time scale. The parties trying to resolve the dispute through negotiation or other alternative dispute resolution. Well, the, and the parties undertaking a review of their positions and seeing if proceedings can be avoided. Each protocol is different, so make sure you look at the one that covers your type of case. And if there's no protocol for your type of case, then look at the practice direction, pre-action conduct and protocols. This covers steps where a protocol does not cover the type of case. Step one is the letter of claim. And this should set out details and facts of the claim and allegations, what remedy or outcome the claimant is seeking, and if that remedy is money, how it is calculated, and provide any documents or evidence to support the claim. Step two is the defendant's response, and the response should be given within a reasonable amount of time, from 14 days for up to three months. That depends on the complexity of case or whether there are any time limits set out in a particular protocol. For example, in the debt recovery protocol, the time for a response is 30 days. If the defendant requires more time, they should ask for it and say why they need it. And the claimant should be reasonable in allowing more time because we must remember litigation should be treated as a last resort. The response should set out whether the claim is admitted or accepted, and if not, the reasons why, and provide any evidence and documents to support the denial. After those two steps have been completed, the parties should be able to understand the other's position, but if not, 
clarification should be sought and there is nothing preventing the parties from exchanging settlement offers and that includes part 36 offers if this applies. Parties should always consider using alternative dispute resolution to try and settle the case. This can be cheap, cheaper and quicker than going to court with some, in some cases ADR resolves a case within one day and costs a lot less money. Types of ADR include mediation with a third party like us facilitates a resolution, arbitration where a third party decides how the dispute should be settled, early neutral evaluation where a third party like us gives an informed opinion to both parties on how the matter will play out if court proceedings are undertaken and ombudsman schemes and there are many out there including the rail ombudsman consumer ombudsman financial ombudsman um, civil aviation authority for flight delays and travel schemes things like that fourth and final step before proceedings should be issued is stock take and each party, especially the claimant, should review their position and ask themselves whether this matter can be resolved without taking court action, and if so, how. What are the issues in the case? Put them down on paper, list them, and see if each individual issue can be resolved separately. What is stopping the case from being resolved? Is it a personal issue? lack of understanding of the other side's case maybe or perhaps someone being stubborn or is it a non-personal matter maybe the other side hasn't given you enough evidence and if, if that's the case ask for it see if you can avoid that court action if you require more information then you can visit our website send us an email give us a ring make an appointment for a video appointment or face to face when we're out of lockdown or come and see us when it's safe to do so. Please do check us out on Trustpilot, Facebook and Twitter. And do stay tuned for more presentations. And subscribe.